Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. Long time Synology users might already know it, but here's a reminder. If you have a Synology NAS, that device can also be your VPN server. And this is something that is not often taken into account. If you have a strong Synology NAS and a weak or consumer grade router, you might even be better off running a VPN from your Synology NAS because it's stronger, it will bring you more performance. Another uh, great advantage that I don't take lightly is the easiness of installing, configuring and managing a VPN in Synology NAS. It's so easy to do. There is a problem though. In today's fiber internet reality, a lot of times, even if you have a public IP given from your ISP, you're still netted, carrier grade net, but still netted. And Windows have a problem with that. It most likely won't allow you to establish that connection. We will need to tell Windows that it's okay to establish the VPN connection even if it thinks that the server is behind the net. And I will show you towards the end of the video how to do it in registry. So, how to configure a Synology NAS as a VPN server? How to create a connection in Windows? And how to tell Windows that it's okay to go ahead and establish this connection? All are coming right up, don't go anywhere. Alright guys, so we are at the computer and we'll start the process, you'll see how easy it is. We are going to start at the beginning and I'm going to configure my VPN server for this demonstration on a Synology device that is really off-site from my location, it's located in my parents' house. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in, this is a virtual machine I have uh, over at that site, I'm going to go into the Synology device. And this is a virtual DSM instance, but it, it doesn't really matter. We'll start at the beginning. First of all, make sure you have a user account already created. I have a user account already created. I'm not going to create a new one. User accounts are really easy to, to set up. It doesn't need to have any special privileges. It doesn't need to be an administrator, just a regular user. And of course, whatever other permissions you want this user to have, you need to create a user account and not use uh, your uh, uh, DSM admin account. Preferably, uh, 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 this, will, this will need to be the user account that you type when we create uh, uh, our connection on Windows. All right, as long as you're in control panel already, there are a few things that are highly recommended that you enable regardless of VPN but when you enable VPN then all the more importance go, goes to these settings go to security tab and go to account open up the account protection right here and enable account protection go into protection open up the denial of service right here and enable DOS protection these are just basic settings that you should enable even, even regardless of VPN. So we can close out control panel and open up package center. Now I've already installed the package itself, but all you need to do is to go to all packages and search for VPN server. You will find this package. Mine, mine says open because it's installed. But for you, you should probably uh, install it. The installation will take about a minute and you will have this application right here. I already created a shortcut on my Synology desktop. Let's open up the VPN server application. Right now, everything is disabled. In this demonstration, I'm going to set up an L2TP IPsec VPN. The reason is I prefer to use L2TP IPsec because it doesn't requ require uh, a client to be installed unlike OpenVPN and it's more secure than PPTP which is in any way not a very secure protocol in these days. So all we have to do is to enable L2TP IPsec VPN. Most of the settings here you can, enable, you can leave just as they are. What I strongly advise that you do is to put a pre-shared key that is really uh, uh, complex, a combination of numbers, letters, capital letters, 
symbols do a, a, a something that is really a, hard to guess or hard to brute force. Don't cheap out on the pre-shared key. I'm going to use a simple pre-shared key here, but definitely use a complex one. All right, so we have a pre-shared key here. All we need to do right now is hit apply. And as you can see, we get a pop-up uh, uh, that we need to, uh, uh, in our next step, we need to port forward these exact ports on our firewall to point to the IP address, to the internal IP address of our Synology device. So, uh, by the way, I'll show you a, a Synology a knowledge base article. You don't need to memorize these ports, but you will need to, po uh, to fo uh, port for these ports to your Synology NES. By the way, I, I already have several videos on this channel about how to uh, uh, configure port forwarding on PFSense, on Unify, Whatever, regardless of whatever device manufacturer you have, make sure to port for these ports. I'm going to put a link to a Synology knowledge base article, which is this one. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video. I'm also going to put a link to our Facebook, to our Synology Facebook group. If you encounter any issues, just join the group post your question, me or anyone from the group will be happy to assist you. So this uh, uh, article uh, um, tells you exactly what ports each Synology application or component, component uses. So just search for VPN server, it will bring you right to this section. We are interested in the L2TP IPsec ports, so it's these ports and UDP. All right, not TCP, UDP. Now, I have already uh, uh, forwarded these ports on my firewall. I don't want to, uh, to take any time uh, doing this step. So my ports are already been forwarded. All right, let's go back to our Synology device. We have a pre-shared key, we have pressed apply. We have confirmed that we need uh, 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 to uh, forward our ports. At this point, actually, the entire configuration of the VPN server is over. All we need to do right now is to make sure we configure the dialer, the connection on our Windows device the right way. So we can close out this uh, window. In fact, let me open up the VPN server application and go to connection list. All right, next up, we have a virtual Windows 10 virtual machine right here. And we'll go to the network portion right here and open network and uh, internet settings. Click on VPN right here. Add a new VPN connection. VPN provider will always be the Windows built-in. Connection name, let's call it Synology. This is where you need uh, your server uh, address if you're using uh, uh, dynamic DNS from Synology or any other provider. This will be where you put in your, your dynamic DNS FQDN. If you have a static IP, you can use the IP over here. I'm using a dynamic DNS address. VPN type will be L2TP IPsec with pre-shared key. This is where we input our complex pre-shared key. Username and password is the type of the sign-in info and let's type in our username that we have already prepared before this video and click on save. The creation of our a, a, a VPN connection is over. Now I'm going to try to connect and I'm probably going to fail to connect. This is where we'll go to the uh, next portion of our video is how to use a registry tweak to circumvent that, but let's try. Maybe at this point uh, for you, it won't even be needed. All right, so let's try to connect. Click on the VPN connection right here and click on connect. And as you can see, we have failed to connect. Reason is probably Windows uh, uh, thinks that my server is behind the net. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to share a link to a Microsoft knowledge base article. 
on how to remediate this or specifically how to tell Windows that it's okay to establish a VPN connection even if the VPN server is behind the net. I'm going to put a link to it in the description of this video. So let's jump back to our virtual machine. I have this link opened right here. And let's open reg, uh, the registry by typing reg edit in the start. We have the exact location that we need to go to right here. So you can just copy and paste. And we'll need to create a new D word value with this value right here. So let's copy, create a new D word, paste. And the value that we need to put right here is two. There are several options. Two is telling uh, Windows that we need, that we allow the connection to be made to a, a net-based server. At this point, it's not really over yet because after a registry change, we need to restart our system. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so hopefully now after our registry tweak, we will be able to, uh, to uh, connect to our VPN. Let's give it a minute to load. All right, so we have a, a shortcut to our a, a, a VPN connection right here. Let's go ahead and click connect. And as you can see, we've just instantly got connected and we can, uh, let's say, test or verify that we are indeed connected to our uh, uh, VPN. By the way, just if I do a quick IP config, you can see that my uh, uh, local network uh, is uh, IP address is this address and I also have a, v a VPN IP address of 10.2 and if I'll open up the local IP address of our remote Synology NES, we should be able to log right in and indeed we are able to. This means we have connectivity from our network directly over VPN to the remote network. We have VPN connectivity. One last thing that I would like to show you before I'm uh, signing off this video, on our VPN server application, by the way, in the privilege tab, you will see that each, each user automatically getting permissions to connect via VPN. So the first thing that I would recommend that you do if you have a, a sort of a, a Synology admin account, just don't allow him uh, permissions to VPN. Also, any other uh, users that you know that should not be connecting via VPN, just remove their permissions. And for the VPN user that we have created, since we are only uh, configuring an L2TP IPsec VPN, there is no need to allow him permissions to open VPN and PPTP. Just this is a way to minimize the, let's say, the attack surface on your VPN server. And if you want, for some reason, to completely prevent VPN one user or any other user, the option to connect via VPN, maybe he's gone on vacation or something, just completely remove his permissions. And this is how you control the privilege or the permission to connect or to deny ability to connect via VPN to your user accounts. All right, guys, so this is how to create a VPN server on your Synology NES, how to create a connection on Windows, and how to use a registry tweak if you get into trouble connecting. I'm going to put a link to every article that I uh, used in this video in the description of this video, along with uh, the link to our Facebook, to our Synology Facebook group. Please join us. If you have any question, questions, post them, and someone from the group, from our group experts, will be happy to help you. If you like this video, please give it a like and I'll see you all on the next video. Bye bye.